It is time for Main Street Magazine on Robin Hood Radio with Thorne Christian Dotter. Good morning, Thorne. Good morning. How are you? Good, and welcome to summer. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I also say that because of the weather, but also, really, this is your welcome to summer issue, right? It is. June issue is, well, it's not here. It'll be here today. It'll be delivered by 9.30 this morning. <laughs> That's always the roughest part. Of the, well, I guess it can't be the roughest part of the week, but still. Uh, it's got it's it's got to be one of those things that you can't wait to get it out there. But uh, I love the uh, the picture uh, right on the on the front cover. Great, I'm happy to hear that. Well, it's a typical summer, right? Yep. It, well, it's 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 bright, it's light, and it exemplifies summer, which was what we need to come out of after a winter that was a weird winter, and a spring that was a weird spring. <laughs> I agree. And when we saw the the picture from Libby, we're like, that's the one we popped it right on the cover. And it, it, I don't know if I've told you, but it's funny. Sometimes we get photos from Laszlo or uh, Libby that we love and we pop them on the cover with a masthead and they just don't have the same pizzazz. Other times we'll ha- even have photos that we're like, oh, yeah, that's a good photo. But, you know, we were not like over the moon about it. But as soon as we pop it on there, it just looks amazing. So it's funny how that works. So we like this photo so we you know we're like we know now enough to say okay let's pop it on and see how it works on the cover and it sure you know sure did and uh, especially changing the colors on the masthead and it just we're we're super happy with it so i'm glad to hear the feedback yeah i know it's bigger than it's bigger than life and and does introduce the, well the magazine of course but it does in, introduce you to summer in, in a visual way it's like yes. it's it's really, i'm not going to compare this to fine art but it's like when you go when you go see art in person and you see something uh it, it transports you it transports yes. you so when and that's the great thing about visual art whether it's photography or painting it transports you and that's what the, that's what this picture does and i i'm no expert but i know that i look at a lot of media and uh you need that first hook and uh you, you got it <laughs> you got it that's awesome right. love fine. love that all right well let's go inside for just a couple of the stories that we'll find uh the big country sky Yep, Betsy has uh, stepped in for us with the artist profile, and for this issue she talks with uh, Tim Prentice and uh, Dave Colbert about their uh, art and especially their process with, um, there's a room at Housatonic Valley Regional High School, uh, I believe it's in the library, that they have undertaken the ceiling portion of and installed a kind of a sculpture there. They did and that, so, yeah, they, they installed uh, Tim Prentice sculpture. They also changed the name, honoring a couple of longtime volunteers that, that, have, that, have, that have pushed the art program inside and outside, and that's where they uh, had the, uh, the Blue and Gold uh, show this year, which is, by the way, it opened up and it is open every day until the end of school. People just have to check in with the main office and they can see it uh, during school hours. So this is the story of, uh, of the work went, went, that went behind putting this sculpture up and, and about their art in general. Yeah, Tim is an amazing, an amazing guy, and uh, the art is amazing, and uh, this will forever hang in there now. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of the library, and they, they changed the name of the library, uh, of the gallery in the library. But, you know, um, a while ago, many, many years ago, the Arts Fund for Region 1 was, for, was formed. And since that time, uh, Arts have become so big in Region 1, uh, not only the high school, but it starts in the grammar school where Hotchkiss has a, has a region-wide, uh, I think it's a fourth grade art day. Uh, by the time uh, these students get to high school, um, I think almost out of, out of all the students, I think a couple hundred participated, 200 out of like 330 in the art programs at Housatonic. That's, that's a staggering number. That's fantastic. So this is a great story on that as well, and and Tim Prentice. All right, now getting away from that, in the summertime, a blooming, a blooming business. <laughs> you like the title? <laughs> I do. Uh, this is the story of Amanda and Greta and their company, A.M. Flower Co., and uh, how they came about. They are all about Pine Plains. They're right out of Pine Plains. They grow their flowers there, and it's a... Um, for the most part, a subscription-based flower company. Um, they also have a flower cart that they do, and it's, um, the, you know, the initial story talks us, walks us through how this idea came about, who they are, and how um, they're neighbors. And during COVID, they um, they both love growing flowers, and during COVID, good, I had the idea of uh, creating a flower cart outside their house, and, and uh, they joined forces, and this is, I think, their second season 
And I got to tell you, I, their flowers are beautiful. Um, they started around Mother's Day with tulips and um uh, I have actually gotten a couple of flower subscriptions now, and I have two in my in my living room right now, and they're just they light up the room. They're beautiful. Well, the names the names are flower names. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> really, uh, and it's a great and it's a great picture of them uh, out front. You know, I was never growing up a flower person, uh, but uh, I now have uh, I planted annuals in front of my house, which actually, by gosh. They're in there like six of you, and now they're really entrenched. And they come up, and I've got hanging baskets. My mother's hanging baskets. And then I've got geraniums. And I, that happened all over the past five or six years. But mm-hmm. flowers make you feel better. It's, once again, they do. It's, a sense, it's a sensory feeling. Yeah. Uh, and in the wintertime, you see green in the house, uh, and it's nice. And then in the summertime, you've got the green in the house and all the different colors outside. It's there's nothing like that sensory experience to make you feel better without even trying to make you feel better. Exactly. And it, this time of year, I mean, you can see the photos from their flowers. They're just beautiful and colorful and the texture of them. And you just want to go smell them. All right. Sensory experiences do, do include chocolate fudge in your ne- next story we'll talk about. <laughs> yes. And uh, Libby's recipe this month is indeed old fashioned chocolate fudge, which is a little bit of a tribute to her late stepfather. So that works also great for Father's Day coming up this month. And so she shares a little bit of the, about the story of her finding, uh, I think his, I believe his name was Claude, Claude's recipe after he passed and the memories that that brought back for her. And then the uh, how pretty easy it is to create this fudge. You know what? Uh, fudge, I like fudge like I like my brownies. I like my, I like the burnt ends on the brownies, the okay. corners. I love that. And I like the, I, I like all fudge, but I like the fudge that, the homemade fudge that's not like two inches thick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and, and it gives you a nice, <laughs> it gives you that nice shot that you need every once in a while uh, of, uh, of sugar and energy. Uh, and oh, it's fun. I'm and, with you. And it's fun to make, by the way. It is fun to make. It's not yeah. the hardest thing. Well, you said thing. this one is pretty easy, so. Yeah. yeah, well, it's not the hardest thing. It's a little slow. It's like making pizza. It's not hard, but there's cleanup. <laughs> okay. And there's right. making fudge is the same way. Well, this type of fudge anyway. It's not hard, but there's a lot of cleanup and a lot that goes on with it. So that's a great story, uh, once again, to take us into the summertime. And I found this next story, the one the final one we'll look at today, really interesting. Uh, something is going on, and... Uh, this deals with uh, Anchor New York, the real estate market, how it's developed over the past couple of years. And you can apply this story probably to just about every town uh, around here in our in our tri- immediate tri-state region. Yep. This is Christine's real estate feature this month, and she looked at the town of Ancrum, which also encompasses Ancrum Dale. Um, there are a couple... There are two rather interesting charts there along with a map that I hope folks can more or less decipher, um, even though you know it's, it's a little small, but it gives you the idea. Um, and what my main interesting point that I took away from this was um, the impact that COVID has had and the value in Ancrum. And I live in Ancrumdale, so, you know, I, I read it and I grew up in Ancrumdale, so I read it with, uh, you know, kind of a different mindset also from that perspective. And uh, Ancrum is a sought after place I, I've found with, with Christine's research on this article. So I'm, I'm curious to see what our uh, readers and uh, my fellow uh, neighbors, as well as some realtors, think of this. Well, you know, it's interesting. I'm looking at the, I look at the chart there land and home sales, single family homes in 2018 was, uh, yeah, you know, let's say a little over $9 million. The median price was $250,000. And it went up a little bit in 2019. Uh, to um, uh, uh, three hundred and seventy-seven thousand uh, dollars is the median price, and actually the sales uh, went down a little bit. But then you go, mm-hmm. you jump from five million dollars in sales to twenty-two million dollars in two thousand twenty, and then yes. and and uh, once again in two thousand twenty-one, sixteen million. Uh, and the interesting to look at is the average, the median price for single-family homes went from. Twenty two thousand five hundred dollars in two thousand eighteen to four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in two thousand twenty one. These are it interesting has numbers. Almost doubled. Yeah, uh, those are interesting numbers, uh, and uh, and I'm sure if you looked at at most areas around our area, uh, the tri state area, those numbers will match up, and some areas will be a little bit more, but nobody. I mean, 
Uh, ever since COVID, uh, the property values and the amount of properties available have just dwindled around here. Yes, and and Christine also being a realtor, she she has a, a access to all these numbers, and she said Ancrum is is uh, right up top there with with this increase in value and the sales and and the sought after, um, and the the price having gone up so much. So I, I thought that was kind of eye opening. Well, um, the eye opening thing was about it. Uh, total sales uh, in in Ancrum of uh, vacant residential lot agriculture and single family homes was a little over ten million dollars. In two thousand nineteen, it was a little over seven million dollars. In two thousand twenty, twenty six million dollars. In two thousand twenty one, almost nineteen million dollars. Uh, you tie the two thousand twenty year into what? To the pandemic, it's just it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what happened around here. It is, and you know, we we've talked about it many a time, and we've obviously had many real real estate stories about it here. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of this year pans out, and how we go into twenty twenty through twenty twenty three in regards to real estate. But what do you think? Is it this a trend that's still staying? Well, I think it's going to stay for a while. It's going to level off simply because it's not as many, it's not as many properties around anymore. But I'm sure the the housing market, like like every other market, has its ups and downs. But I think I think we're pretty steady here now for probably for the next year or two, and then see what happens uh, then. But uh, 2020 certainly led into a great 2021 as well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, that is just some of the stories that we're following uh, on your newsstands, hopefully a little bit later on today. Uh, welcome to Summer Main Street Magazine. Of course, you can find them on the web at Main Street Mag as well, MainStreetMag.com. Thorne, we'll speak to you again next week. Sounds terrific. Stay cool today. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thorne and Christian Dotter in Main Street Magazine here on Robinhood Radio. Once again, MainStreetMag.com on the web.